Morgan scored six touchdowns in the first mm -hmm. half. Colorado kicked three field goals. And, and you know, it, yeah, they're, you look at that graphic, I, I think it's phenomenal. 16 of their 18 total first downs happened on those two plays. Possession, score a couple times, and the fourth quarter is wide open. You know, when you when you go in their homes and recruit them, you're their friend for life. It's not just about football, it's about life. And so, I just overwhelmed. Meanwhile, right now, Colorado gets a first down off a pass interference penalty, but I'll tell you, Connor Wood took a huge hit. And he's bouncing back here. This is going to be interesting to watch the next couple of plays because Derek Malone absolutely smoked him on that pass. Take a look here. A little earlier, he comes from inside and brings him down. It's a good, it's a legal hit. But the fans always, they don't like their quarterback going down. But you're right, it, it's going to, we need to pay attention to him now. Atkins trying to go wide. Oregon strings out that edge. Well, this Oregon defensive front seven. We've seen two weeks in a row now has looked awfully good. Inside screen was tried and the pass was tipped. Tyler McCullough was the intended receiver. So the Buffs will go on fourth down. Again in that awkward field position. Big pressure coming. And Wood does a great job. He spun away from a couple, but just too many folks. Rodney Hardrick was the first man through to the quarterback. You're right. Your guard takes the first backer. Your running back is outside on the outside backer, and they bring an extra man. And that guy cannot be blocked. So Oregon on downs. Takes over. Marshall spins away. Mario. <laughs> Mario will get a, uh, he's going to slap himself on the helmet. He'll he'll get he'll get like a D minus for effort. He was just, and I, was, I would guess Glenn, he was being smart. He was trying to just run in some interference. Marshall takes it to the 50. Our Pac-12 conference office came up with another one. Well, this could be trouble for Colorado. Well, angled out of bounds. With Mario to speed, if he could have turned that, <laughs> that could have been dangerous. But Awuze was able to run him out of bounds. There's that zone blocking with the read. The read option on the backside. He takes it and he's gone. We used the uh, baseball analogy last week about this. And, and Mariota laughed about it. Ryan McGrady found out he's got four complete games. Mariota's only finished four games in his college career. That's out of this. I mean, that's because all the organs blowing out people. But isn't that amazing? This is his 18th game. And he's only seen the end of four. Yeah. So. I'm gonna get all my peas out. That's an interference. Offense Whoa. number one. Push off. My bad. 15 yard penalty. Main second down. Yeah, he's, Mark Helper just was, Mark Helper just saying you're bad referees. Yeah, he was saying he was held. He yeah. was held. Inside receiver right here on this cut, and he gets up into the chest. Oh, but I didn't see a noticeable push off. I saw a grab by Bell. So I see both things. To me, that should be no call. So now long second, and Mariota's got Addison. And another touchdown for Breland Addison. Another big play, 44 yards for six. So Malinato to kick. Marcus Mariota lighting it up again. Finds Braylon Addison crossing the field. Oregon Ducks continue to put points on the board. and you're watching Pac-12 Networks. Go Ducks. All right, so Oregon is at 50 and counting. Still have 25 minutes of football to play. Colorado's have decent runbacks. Atkins out near the 30. Marcus Mariota with his eyes. Now, Oregon likes zone read. That means zone blocking to where if you handed the ball, that's what it would be. But the read is those eyes of Mariota looking at the backside guy. He blocks him with his action and his eyes. So you get numbers to one side with the zone, the read of Marcus Mariota on the end. I don't think anybody has done it as well as he does it or is doing it as well as he does it right now. 
cut. Tony Jones now in as the Colorado running back for the first time. Flag down on his play. Illegal formation. Offense, five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Mains first down. That's the toughest part, I think, of the job is, is I don't think recruiting ever stops. Spruce on the outside. Talking to some of the coaches, both Oregon and Colorado, you know, the thing about being a college coach is you never stop recruiting. <laughs> Oregon and one man got in there did his best effort. Now Addison. And he repeat last week? No. 488 yards for Oregon and seven touchdowns. They come, and it's Byron Marshall for more. One reason, like Thomas Tyner, who's going to be a big part of this team, you have to believe, in future years. And Mariota finds Farrell Brown. Braylon Addison with two touchdowns again this week. Last week's were returns. This week's are receptions. He's caught five for 158. Anthony Thomas and I've been watching him he's been very active on the sidelines standing in huddles and giving advice to the other running backs and other players on the team he's been very vocal and that's exactly why coach Helfrich told me that he wanted him to be here even though he's not playing that's that leadership he was talking about Ted but his mind is in the process of the game so he's not slow on the uptake the next time he gets in Mariano with a late pitch so Marshall with another 100-yard game, the seventh 100-yard rush game already this year for an Oregon Duck. And Huck breaking tackles, dragging defenders into the end zone for the Oregon score. Relentless continues, the eighth Oregon touchdown. It's like the tide, it just keeps coming in. Oregon Ducks, this time it's Mariota to Josh Huff for the score. Oregon update. Now the Oregon Ducks with another just ferocious day. Five touchdown passes by Mariota, 355 through the air. And that might be the mark that enables Mark Helfrich to uh, call it off for the first team. When you get a 41-point lead, that's then. <laughs> that's our mark. Kick to Atkins. And the Colorado freshman running back comes out. Now, Oregon coach Mark Helfrich, we referenced this story a little bit last week that he was thinking, uh, really wasn't thinking much about getting into coaching for a career. And we actually went back and found his high school year, but Marshfield High School, Coos Bay, Oregon, 1992. Look at 396. Wow. That's, Park, that's Parker like. Well, somewhat. I mean, I, I don't know how they do the opposite. Uh, you know, those big numbers, but how about this senior award teacher's pack? <laughs> and he thought he wouldn't get into politics because he wasn't dirty enough. Dirty enough. That one. Now, see, with my yearbook, it just said who? <laughs> Mr. Powell, a heavy run. That's called self-awareness, Glenn. I right? think it I is. Like that, that, isn't I, it? Think, I, think, that? I think he knew oh. what he wanted to do, and he wanted to influence people. Mike Bellotti got him back into coaching, got him back to work as, as a GA, and we ended up, he went to Arizona State, came here to Colorado, and then Chip Kelly brought him back. And Chip Kelly still raves about Helfrich. Went to bat big time twice for Helfrich to become the head coach. A guy like Olamu could step up, or Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell had two in the first quarter. Good. Fly up there on the Oregon side. Well, that gets with the drop. It'll be fourth down. Are they as good as Stanford seven right now? No, but can they be? Certainly. And probably better. That statement. That's saying something. Ooh, Addison lets that go again. Well done by Dara O'Neill. That's the second punt that he's hit with that perfect backspin. And just hit me, you know that uh, Stanford's the last team to beat Oregon at home and at, on the road. That's, that's, that's saying something about that Stanford team. Jeff Lockie in at quarterback now, and there's an Oregon fumble that Colorado says they've recovered, and the officials confirm. There you go. 
that ball is not the exchange. That just gets yeah, knocked tighter. out. For the review, the ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. So that ball, it's hard to tell from that angle. As I said, Orms was in on that tackle, and it looked like Uzo Deribe was in on there. The ball looks out before his behind hits the ground. This is, I think, the view we need. You can see he's not After on the ground. After review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. Yes. So Powell puts it inside the team. But Taylor Hart is really, I think, underrepresented when you talk about good yeah. D linemen in this league. Runs it middle. Fourth down. And oh, oh too bad for Colorado. Connor would have had Richardson. So there's traffic out there with that tight end and linebacker sitting in that hole. At Notre Dame. And then back to San Jose State. And Mike McIntyre made sure he had Kemp Air come with him. Oh, Tyner holds that ball. Jeff Locke going with a deep ball here, and that's intended for Eric Dungy, and it was intercepted. You can't go back shoulder, so this thing just gets too much air. It needed to be about three more yards out there. Of course, Henderson, nice job adjusting to getting that ball. That was the first man that Locke saw when he got back to the sideline. Connor Woods seeing Oregon defenders and is dropped. All that hair flying around up there, I'm a bit jealous. And Wood's going to get dropped again. This won't be a sack. He actually gained it back. All right, 15 minutes to play in Boulder. The 2013 season, an insane amount of scoring as proof in our Coors Light. Cold hard facts. Reverse in the first half. Neal runs up and hits that running lateral rugby kick. When you come down the tunnel, that's where the gladiator effect of, of football kind of comes to play. You can see the, the opponent, you can hear the crowd, all the different emotions that everybody has. Some guys smiling and laughing, some guys are, are just raw intensity. That's when you know the game time is near. I think that's, again, what makes college football great. Chance Allen, Jake Rodriguez. Oh, that's an impressive throw. Puts Oregon at the Colorado 35. He was patient for it, waited for that window to open up to put it in. Other opportunities, but they got him involved. Rodriguez keeps a very late pitch, but a clean one to Chance Allen. 17-yard gain, and that's the view on Rodriguez is he has the ability to do a little bit more of that. Program. This board runs inside, and again, we are helpers. You have to understand that and start looking at these. This is sorted cast. And in the back of your mind, who's next? Well, Rodriguez. Wow. That was almost a Russell Wilson play. And then it's picked off by Greg Henderson. Who's Out here, gets pressure. This way, he's got to know, throw it away. There's too many bodies back there. He never sees underneath. Wrap it up, wrap it up. Wood continues to mention Jordan Webb, even though he's practicing full, we've been told. Buckner pressure from the backside. And an impressive player we saw last week for the first time came in there late. And it's to Rodney Prevo. You know, Clemens. Yes, he's um, got the build that you're yeah. seeing with the edge in, in the and, and newer generation Peppers. edge rusher, yeah. right? Downtown Boulder, and it is open for business. Just the roads are open and clear with a very few exceptions, but Boulder is back, and they uh, 
after surviving a rough period. They, City Bulls are very proud that they're back and active. It's Jeff Lockheed's in the game for Oregon here. Bassett on the running play. The Oregon faithful, there are a lot of Oregonians here. They are all still here. Bassett is a junior from Beverly Hills, California, on the carry. And that... All right, Mike, we have a fourth down play here for Oregon. And Bassett's going to get smothered. Colorado's defense. Pumping his fists. A rare show of emotion out of San Paulo. Had a good game in Corvallis last week. Tony Jones in there now gets the ball. And he's tripped up. Comes down to moments. Who's going to have moments? And right now, Mariota's still got Stanford. Still got Washington in a possible championship game. He had 20 of 27 today for 455 in a dome. I think Marcus Mariota would like to play a dome once in a while. <laughs> a fascinating look at how Cal endured the miserable weather in Eugene last week. A, that looked like a. Now they're ruling that out of bounds. Rodriguez trying to keep, doesn't get away. And another deep ball. Develop a little tower. Morgan does have a punter. Spruce on the return. You did. I did. I walked over to the field and watched the young ladies play. It was a lot of That's fun. That's where you were when I was going for that extra study session. Okay. <laughs> Wood's middle throw there is completed. The atmosphere here in Boulder for basketball is tremendous. So it was a Curious, all of us around the conference who follow basketball, curious to see Mary Jake Lockie about here for Oregon. With four and a half to play. A big burst inside for Oregon. Cal's defense is obviously outmanned in just about every game we play. At point, they decided they might run the ball. Right at the top of the right at the top of the show, we talked about the efficiency of Oregon, and when you, and of course, Coach McIntyre said it. It's first and second down, first and second down, touchdown. Yards per play on first down and second down tonight. Look at the first down conversions. 14 of their 20 conversions came on first down, or 28 conversions, excuse me, and nine came on second. That's impressive. 23 of their first downs came on first and second down. They don't run it over, but it's a third. Rocky with a keep using the wide side of the field. Second half of Arizona State at Notre Dame. Wow. That's not going to make it all the way. Ford is inside the 15. Last couple of plays has put Oregon over 700 yards tonight. On 100, they've run 93 plays. Remember when 300 yards was a big deal? Oh, it was, right, exactly. That's a good half now. Yeah. 30 first downs tonight. Just every, we could sit here and numb your head with numbers. As Ford is down just shy, but the one, the one that really matters is, again, this Oregon doesn't kick field goals. You talk of efficiency, but it's it's like watching a, a storm surge of the ocean. It's wave after wave after wave. It doesn't stop. It's the problem is that Oregon does it, so the standard they force you to play at is ridiculously high. By halftime, Mariota, who now, by the way, has gone 202 pass attempts without an interception. 202. At halftime, you told me that in spite of the lead, the team was not playing up to Oregon standards. How do you think they closed out this game? Okay. You know, okay. Um, obviously, defensively, I thought we had a little bit more urgency in the second half. Uh, a couple of special teams units, we, we just need to, you know, like everybody, we need to improve. Uh, but really happy with our guys, just, just approach, their effort, their mentality, and we'll have another chance to, to, to get ready for, next, for the next one.
What's the biggest thing that you guys can build on from this game as you head into a highly anticipated matchup next week against Washington? Well, I think we're building on everything. You know, I think we, we uh, turn the ball over three times with our second and third team. That's that's unacceptable. You know, those guys have a chance to play and a chance to kind of put themselves on film and, and, and you know, get some real life play. And that's not what, you, not what you want from a result. But we'll build on all that and we'll just keep getting better. What do you think of the way Marcus distributed the ball today through the air and on the ground? Well, we think Marcus, Marcus is a special guy. He's, he's, you know, I don't know where he, he lies nationally. That's not my job, but, but we wouldn't trade him for anybody. I know that. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Best of luck next week. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. Thank you, Coach. Five touchdowns. Byron Marshall runs for 122, and Oregon rolls up 57 again.